Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 is going to be today. As we continue on, you know, the world says, well, it is what it is. We're going to talk about how to change your is. Is this a Bible study? It's a Bible study. Oh. Okay. Good morning. Welcome to Wake Up. Where we wake up. I'm Pastor Scott. I'm Pastor Jason. we got a great show for them today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You sharing it really gets the message out there. That's right. And if you're a new subscriber, type in where you're from. We like to read that on Wednesdays. Watch this clip. We have to learn to raise our beliefs because your life will go to whatever you believe. If this is your belief here, then your life will be dragged down here. But if we can find a way in the series to raise your belief up, then your life will be raised up to this level. And you, for most people, you know, you're like, well, what do you believe? And people don't really even know what they believe in this day and age, right? What, what do you believe? What do you believe about your tomorrow? What do you believe that God can do in your life? And what you find is for most Christians, they are simply just accepting whatever comes their way, not realizing that you have the power within you to change your circumstances. Well, here it is. Well, you know, pastor, it, just, it is what it is. It just is yeah. what it is. And here's the problem is you're letting your is drive your life instead of switching the seat and putting your belief. If I put my belief in the driver's seat, my belief begins to change my is. That's true. That's the, whole Bible. the whole Bible is about changing your is. Yeah. Never let where you are right now and what's happening in your life define your faith. And that's what they do. Right. My circumstances determine how I believe. Right. Well, this is what I... This is what keeps happening. Therefore, this must be true. This right. over here must be true. No. no. No, no, Believe, and that'll change your circumstances. Your belief can overwrite your experience. That's what I'm saying. And so what we do, though, is we let circumstances write our beliefs. Yeah. And that's backwards. It is. When our beliefs should be writing our circumstances. What I believe begins to bring the power of God into our life. And Proverbs 3, uh, 5 through 6, because we're talking about, um, uh, I believe God will. Yeah. I be GW. I believe God will. No matter what you're facing, put your faith in God, because all of a sudden, when you put your faith in God, there's a way out. Right. And here we see there's hope. Solomon says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. I believe God will. So that's what it's saying. I, I, G, B, D, or I, B, G, D, W. I believe God will. I, B, G, D, W. I don't know. Yeah, I messed up the words. Is there a D in there? No. Why you did I keep putting a D? I, B, G, W. J. I believe God will. Uh, he's saying, okay, believe God will. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. And that's what it's saying. So my understanding is, is we just got laid off. So what do I do? Panic. I panic. Yell, scream, be grumpy. No, 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 right? But instead, I go, wait a second. I trust in God. I believe God will. I, B, G, W. I believe God will provide during this time. So it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. I believe you will, God. Oh, you got this. And then it says, the Lord will make your path straight. Mm. Right? So it seemed crooked. And it seemed like everything's out of I was all whack. over the place. I was going this way, and then I was going that way, and I don't know where to go. And I, But when you trust God, all of a sudden, he starts to direct your steps. Right. When you get your mind stayed on the Lord, he he takes care of your path. Right. The the lamp of the Lord is the word of God and it's a lamp unto my feet. So when I trust God with all my heart, it's interesting about when I think about my heart, I think about the mind, the will and the emotions, the soul of a right. man. Mm -hmm. And so with all of my mind, with all of my soul, with all of my emotions, I'm trusting God. So my, when I have wrong emotions, that's an emotion that's not trusting God. Right. And my job is to then work on my... So we, we try so much to work on our circumstances. I'm going to say not to work on it, but I think that we would spend some time working on our belief. What do I believe, right? And you can make it... Oh, no, I believe God. Okay, God, you got this. Okay, I'm, I'm going to... God, you, you're going to handle this. You're going to... I'm going to do what I can. And I know, God, you'll do everything that I can't. I believe, God, you will. I'm trusting God in this circumstance. I'm trusting you, God, in my marriage. I'm reading books and doing everything I can in my marriage. And God, I believe that you'll do the things that I can't do. I got this teenager and we're getting information. We did the train up a parent, right? And I believe in God that you're, you're bringing the right friends into their life, that you're helping me navigate what to say. I believe, God, you will work this out, mm -hmm. right? There's the, there's the trust is, yeah. is that God, you are working on my behalf. And one of the most unbiblical statements I think you can say is, well, it is what it is. Wow. 
That is what it is, Pastor. I don't know what to tell you. That's uh, you know I got this doctor report, and it is what it is. We accept our circumstances, right? Because our experience is dictating our faith. Our experience is oh, defining so what we believe, and instead we say, no, no, no. My faith is going to define my experience. Yes. And my faith is going to define what comes out of my mouth, and my faith is going to define what my emotions are allowed to feel. Come on. My faith is going to de- define what my brain is allowed to think, and and also. When I'm in a situation, I got to start really paying attention to my input. Like, what am I letting in? Am I letting the negative words in? Am I letting the negative imagery in? Or am I really kind of fasting negativity and just getting the positive things in? Maybe I'm in the Word of God way more than usual. Maybe I'm listening to, you know, Joel Osteen a little more often, you know, getting that hope stirred up. You you gave me my, I think my next teaching though really is because... What you're letting in is going to do one of two things. It's either going to raise your belief or it's going to lower your belief. For sure. Right? What you let in. So are you letting in and who you're even surrounded by? For sure who you're around. Because if you're around a bunch of people, I love to be around my brother. Don't call your negative Nancy. I can even be having some problems in my life. I call my brother. We're just talking. And I leave the conversation and I'm like, yeah, this is fine. God's got this. Like it it raises my my belief. We both. Yeah. And I feel the same way about you. It's like Jason's over there and he's... He's just pumping that belief up, just pumping it up, pumping it you up. You got to be up. around people that are going to believe God with you. Right. And Not people you, that go, well, you know, I don't know if that's going to happen. What we might call the negative Nancy, right? Yeah. Don't call negative Nancy when you're in a negative spot. No. Call positive Pete. I love Pete. <laughs> call somebody that says, I know for sure now that God does not play favorites. <laughs> God loves us all and he gives to us all graciously and he has mercy and peace for us. And God is blessing us and he has this and God will fight for you. You want those people in your life that are going to give you the right information. You want Paul's around your life. You want, you I believe God will. IBGW people who also will believe with you. We encourage you to partner with us. Uh, it really helps us get this message out there. So whatever God puts on your heart, don't ask give. Just how much? God, five. 10, 20, whatever God says. And it really allows us to, to get this message in front of people. And God will always give seed to the sower and bless you more than you can give. That's just how he rolls. You want to pray? Father God, I thank you, Lord, that you are blessing <laughs> these people, Lord, richly, abundantly, that there are people in financial distress right now today. They're listening to this and they're thinking, I don't know what I'm going to do. But Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are already working on their behalf, that you are clearing up this problem. You are removing anxiousness. You're removing fear. You are showing them that you have this in your hands and peace that passes understanding is invading their hearts right now because we trust you, God. We trust you with our whole heart in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. And watch this clip. How many Christians out there, there's an alarm in their life is going off and they just accept it, not realizing that you can turn the alarm off by simply believing that God's miracle is upon your life and he can bless and take away certain things that are going on. We just accept it. Just accept certain things with our life that this is, you know, and we just go through life accepting the problems in our life instead of saying, wait a second, I don't have to accept a mountain. I can believe that the mountain gets removed is what the Bible says. I don't have to accept the sickness. I can believe that God will heal this body, that this is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and that sickness and disease cannot live in this body. I don't have to accept depression, but I can believe that the joy of the Lord is my strength. My belief begins to change the world around me, that I can elevate my life by simply elevating my belief. I don't have to just accept the alarm. That's funny, right? It just kept going off and off and off, right? I'm like, somebody could break into your house and you wouldn't even know. Wake up, there's nothing left in the house, right? You, right? We got to raise our belief if we want to raise our life. And so many times people are, 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 are complaining to God, right? In their prayers and complaining. How many people know that your complaints don't move God? Your whining doesn't move God. There is one thing the Bible talks about that moves God, and that is your belief, that my belief, right? Your belief is so powerful that it, that it can get God to move, but it also, your belief in the wrong direction can stop God, can hold back God and what God wants to do in your life. The Israelites is a great example, right? God, that is just part of the Red Sea. It's not like they didn't see a miracle, but then they can't get into the promised land. God wants them in the promised land, led them to the promised land, but because they did not believe that God could, they spent a whole generation not in God's best in their life, wandering around the wilderness. 
simply because they believe. And I wonder how many Christians are wandering in the wilderness and all they need to do is in this series begin to raise their belief. Like, share, and subscribe in church this weekend, wherever that is. And uh, we will see you tomorrow.